thinking about Christmas and very good time to help you, if we can, with ideas for a Christmas dinner and offer you a menu and some original recipes, which I hope you may like to use on Christmas Day itself. I am pleased to have as my guest Jocelyn Dimbleby, whose recipe books you may already know. And as you're in charge of the main course, Jocelyn, let's have a look at it. Well, as you see, it's a lovely goose. It has a change, I hope, as a change from turkey. Um, I'm always urging people to try goose because it is, after all, more traditional because uh -huh. turkey only came in fairly recently from America. And you have it every year, um, do you? And we have it not every year. Sometimes, sometimes we Just have a change, too. Mm -hmm. But I do, like, I do prefer goose. I think it has a much more interesting flavour. And you can also give it, which it has here, a, a really special stuffing mm. because the flavour of goose goes well with fruit and nuts, which are in this stuffing, and spices. Mm -hmm. Um, That's your signature, isn't it's, it? It's my signature to the dish. Spicy things, yes. yes. <laughs> very nice. And what about the accompaniments now? The accompaniments are to save you time on this very busy day, because I always seem to have very little time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't take too long opening my stocking. And this um, here is potatoes which are not, uh, are not peeled, and then you don't have to change the dish. They're all done in one dish mm. um, and um, flavoured with olive oil. And they're very, very good indeed, and very crispy. Oh, I look forward to um, hearing about this. This looks like bread sauce. And that is brown bread sauce, wholemeal bread sauce, mm -hmm. which also is very quick to do, because you literally tear up the bread mm -hmm. and put everything in together and slice up the onion, put that in as well. No painful and, uh, grating. It's got cream and butter. It's very rich and very delicious. Good. Now we'll move into the middle here. This is your sauce for it. Um, that's the sauce for the, for the um, goose, yes, which also complements the stuffing because it's got apple juice and um, mm. soy sauce That's in lovely. it. It's lovely. What about and this? these are simply um, sprouts that have been steamed. I always steam my vegetables um, yeah. because I think it's better, but of course you can boil them, but just don't overcook them. That's the thing to remember. They must be brilliant green. <laughs> well, perhaps you've got something to do and I can go yes. on explaining about the things I'm doing. I'm doing the starter here. Doesn't it look colourful? All it is is some fresh vegetables and fruit and a lovely, lovely flavoured dip with uh, chives in it. I think it's important not to have a great heavy starter when you've got something superb coming afterwards. And the pudding I'm doing as well, just a simple ice cream, but it has a secret because in the middle it's an excellent uh, mincemeat flavoured with brandy. I think you'll like hearing about that as well. Beside it, some biscuits with a Christmas theme, of course. My shortbread biscuits like little Christmas trees. Now, did you see that little menu card I made just for fun? Well, it isn't just for fun because with it, we've printed all today's recipes since not all of them can be found in our books. And if you'd like this menu and the recipe sheet, send a large stamped self-addressed envelope to me at Farmhouse Kitchen, Yorkshire Television, Leeds, LS3, 1JS. Now say that again. Grace Mulligan, Farmhouse Kitchen, Yorkshire Television, Leeds, LS3, 1JS. And if you'd like to send for any of our paperback books, it's a different address altogether, and the details will be given at the end of the programme. And you know that this big book is available at lots of bookshops. Now, Jocelyn will be ready to start with her own original recipe for roast goose with a spiced and fruity stuffing. Now here is your beautiful 12 pound goose and uh, the first job you have to do is to take out the fat, there's lots of fat inside it, and you take out all the excess fat. Um, you may think it's a messy job but in fact just think what good it's doing to your skin, your hands, wonderful hand cream. And um, you will also take out the giblets, which I keep for making a lovely stock later. Um, I make it definitely later because there's no time for making stock on Christmas Day. And I make a, a lovely soup, probably a day or two afterwards, with vegetables that I've got around. I always have lots at Christmas. Sweet vegetables are very good with it, like um, parsnips and turnips and carrots and celery, anything really, and unpeeled onions. That's, I think, very important because it makes a lovely colour to the, to the, to the um, stock. And you also keep beside the goose's liver, which you see is a big, big liver. Um, oh, I, I forgot to say that you sh uh, what I normally do is I boil down the fat 
um, and keep a lot of dripping because it's very valuable and shouldn't, shouldn't throw it away because it m does make the best roast potatoes ever. So you can keep it in the freezer and use it as you like in different containers. Um, or you can even just rub it on your chest when you have a cold. Apparently it works wonders. Um, but don't throw it away. And the liver you keep to, li to eat for, for the stuffing. And now I'm going to prepare the stuffing. And this is the first stage of the stuffing uh, because this has to be cooked for a bit before the other ingredients are added. And you've got wonderful ingredients. You've got fresh root ginger, which if you haven't used it before, you just must start now because it's nothing like what you think of dried ginger, crystallized ginger, although it's the same thing. It's just not like it. And if, if you break it open, most wonderful smell, lemony, fresh lemony smell. I mean, nobody could hate it. And that combined with garlic is very good. Again, don't be alarmed by the garlic because it's mild in the stuffing. It's lovely. It adds to the flavor. You won't mind it. I know you won't. And then there's also dried apricots, which you soak. If you just try and resist eating them all up dry, and they're so lovely dry. But anyway, you soak them first, and then you chop them up and you've chopped up the, the peeled ginger and s three ounces of dried apricots, two inch piece of peeled ginger, and um, two inches vaguely, and the garlic. And then this is a bulb fennel, which I'm sure you've seen before, and you may only have used it in salads before, but in fact, I prefer it cooked. There's something about it brings out a much richer flavor. It's very, very good, and it's lovely in this stuffing. Um, they all marry very well together. Anyway, with that lot of ingredients, you put them in the frying pan with a little bit of your goose fat, just a tablespoonful or so, just to moisten them. And you cook them round like this for about eight to ten minutes until they've, only until they've just gone softened and translucent. So you just, just watch until, the, until they're, like when you're frying onion, until they've gone soft. And then at that point, you add the rest of the stuffing ingredients, which is the liver, which has been chopped up. It sort of almost all falls together soft. And, um, oops, sorry, this, is not, this isn't, I thought this was lit, but it isn't. There. And you add those, and, um, and those just, they cook very, very quickly. They, they just have to go opaque. And you also add all these other ingredients in any order. Two ounces of walnuts and two ounces of almonds with their skins on. Again, they look nicer and they taste nicer. And taste is really everything. You must remember that always when cooking. Taste is so important. And um, then this is two teaspoonfuls of cinnamon, uh, which is really wonderful smell is going to come out now. Wonderful smells have been coming out all the time, but it's even better now. More wonderful smells with the grated lemon rind, sort of fresh, lemony, sharp smell. Ooh, lovely, I can smell it. <laughs> and um, you, you just do these just until they're, they're cooked with the, also the chopped apples, which just begin to soften, but they don't have to get very soft. They're dessert apples. And you season my old pepper grinder which I've had for about 15 years. It's broken, but it's better, and a good pepper grinder is worth hanging on to forever. And um, salt. Just how you think you'll like it, but a bit more seasoned, actually, than, than you think. And then you the, take this stuffing over here and put it in a bowl like this, like it's been done here. And you just then do the, f the last final touches to it, which is to add the whisked egg, which has the, um, which binds it. And um, it doesn't, I mean, it's not a solid stuffing at all, thank goodness. It's, it's, it's a nice loose stuffing, but it just binds it. And then you put in a lot of chopped parsley. I mean, I like to use a lot. It looks very bright green, and it even stays quite, quite bright green through the cooking. It's very good. Um, and there, you see, it looks very pretty. And it's certainly not a packet stuffing. And then you put it into the goose, 
which is very easy because you're just putting it into the body cavity and you just shovel it in really and there's lots of room so it'll all fit it won't burst out and then you really just have to seal it up as best you can i put the legs in here to make them neat and i and i and i skewer it to get the goose ready for um, roasting we rub it all over with salt and this helps helps it crisp helps helps the taste oh and grace has very very kindly brought a goose that we've already been cooking it's the smaller one isn't it i've turned it over and poured off the dripping well for thank you. you very much for doing that because we've actually cooked this goose breast side down which keeps it really moist because goose can get a dry breast so if you cook it until the last 45 minutes breast side down and it cooks at gas 3, 325 Fahrenheit, 170 centigrade for a 20 to 30 minutes per pound you can work it out according to the size of goose that you've got. Um, this goose will take or the 12 pound goose, about, uh, 12 pound goose about four hours at the very least and now what we do now is we just have to sprinkle a tiny little, well, a little bit of caster sugar. You can rub it a bit if you like to put it over, which that just puts a wonderful sort of glossy shine on it and makes it extra brown and lovely for the last 45 minutes. And then you put in a tablespoonful of soy, soy sauce and the juice of a lemon and quarter of a pint of lovely apple juice into the remaining juices that have already come out during the cooking and that's going to make a lovely gravy which I shall now show you how to make from the, the um, juices that remain from the original goose that you saw on our table and here here are these juices and what you're going to do is this you're going to add some arrowroot to thicken it and why I use arrowroot is because arrowroot again makes a sort of transparent and shiny gravy which I just think goes well with this goose and this spicy stuffing and you just simply pour it in and stir it round about two or three minutes until it thickens and turns into a nice glossy gravy to go with your goose, which is what you're waiting for now. Glossy gravy for and here's some glossy gravy for the very first cutting. It smells Transparent wonderful. and glossy. And um, I <laughs> hope you enjoy it. I'm looking forward to it. I'll have to have a taste too. Just let's go um, over how you did the potatoes again, Jocelyn. I think that would be interesting. Um, well, here are the potatoes that are these easy potatoes, which, in fact, I boil completely the night before. At the before. beginning, yes. 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 And um, totally, not parboiled, totally, oh, whole soft. in their skins. Yes. And then I cut them up quite small, as you yes. see here, still in their skins. And then I put them into a bowl, mm -hmm. all hot, mm -hmm. and pour on some olive oil, two or three tablespoonfuls of olive oil, whatever will absorb into the potatoes and season Lots them well. Of seasoning. Lots of black pepper. Mm. And so back and then into the dish. Back into the dish, ready to do. That's what I like. Um, then ready, to, ready to bring out. out. No transferring to anything else. Yes. Good Super. Tip. So let's have a yeah. look at the bread sauce. And now. the bread sauce um, is also this brown bread sauce, which is all done together. I mean, you literally tear the bread to bits. You don't have to cut off the crusts. Um, you grate whole nutmeg into it, mm -hmm. and you have whole cloves. You take them out at the last minute if you can see them around. It doesn't really matter. Onions. And you have butter. onions, which also are cooked in it. Mm -hmm and butter and cream and milk and it makes a lovely rich and bitty bread sauce mm. not that horrible sticky white stuff which i hated so much as a child exactly. it's really good sounds really interesting yes. make a wonderful accompaniment to that superb goose well, i hope so i hope mm. you like it <laughs> absolutely lovely wonderful spicy delicious meal good <laughs> now it's my turn and i shall begin with the crudities I need to make some, a sour cream and chive dressing. Well, I hope this croaky old throat of mine is better by Christmas. Now, I'll go on to crudities, which is just another word for saying raw vegetables and fruit. And the dip I'm making to go with them is here, the start of it's here in the bowl. A small carton of sour cream, that's a five ounce carton. And because it's actually a dressing in the book and I want it to be a lot thicker because it's a dip, I've whipped it to the floppy stage. Can you see that? Now, sour cream is not 
cream that's gone off. It's a proper culture of cream that you can buy. And if you can't find it, and my small town doesn't always have it, you could use ordinary cream and put a couple of tablespoons of yog natural yogurt into it to give that bite of flavor. And to that, I want to add two big tablespoons of chopped chives, finely done. And again, if you don't have chives, you could use the tops of salad onions. It works just as well, but a little less, got stronger flavor. Tablespoon of wine vinegar. That's a good quality vinegar, like cider. And if you have, you have to use malt, I would dilute it with a little bit of water. Now, in there as well goes some Dijon mustard. I don't like too much in, so I'm just putting half a teaspoon in. A little salt a lot of pepper and a good big fat pinch of sugar. Now that isn't in the recipe so that's my addition to it. And stir all that together to get this very nice flavoured and then into my nice little ramekin. Don't give people too much. It's an individual portion so you really don't need masses of it. And set it on a decorative dish with some bits of lettuce and your raw vegetables carrot here, different kinds of pepper, and little bits of wholemeal bread, lovely toasted, and my lovely little, I hope you appreciate the artistry that went into that carrot, and that is crudités with that lovely chives dressing. Now for the ice cream surprise. These are made with bought ice cream and a surprise filling. In the book you'll find the filling is grapes and meringue. And for Christmas, I'm using mincemeat, and it's the filling from Angela Mottram's deluxe mincemeat puff recipe, ideal because it has no fat in it. Mincemeat with suet in it wouldn't be nice at all inside ice cream. And just have a look over here. Here are the ingredients for this mincemeat, which is very, very nice indeed. Raisins, plumped up, washed and dried. I like doing that. Almonds, there's four ounces here, four ounces of almonds four ounces of currants, a dessert apple peeled and chopped small, and a good scraping of nutmeg. And do look at this orange uh, candied peel here. Try and get that rather than the mixed peel, which is much, much nicer. There's five ounces of that here. Two big tablespoons of brandy, which makes it absolutely delicious. And it keeps extremely well. You'll find it doesn't go off at all. And here it is, ready to go inside my nice ice cream thing. So we'll move up again and Jocelyn's going to bring me the ice cream block that I've had freezing. Thank you. That's grand. And you'll see what I've used for it. Just a cream, the bottom of a cream carton. Do you see? I think that's about right for an individual portion. I did try yogurt cartons but they were a bit tiddly so I decided on the cream one. And this is just ordinary ice cream packed inside. And what I'm doing now is making a hollow out of the middle. So I want to make a little wall and shovel out some of that ice cream. And I want enough space in there to give me a good two teaspoons any away of that branded uh, mincemeat. So you can do that quite carefully. I'm sure you can see also how easy it would be to fill other things in here. Uh, in the recipe in the book, I've already told you, it's grapes and meringue. But I once did it with lovely big chocolate with a soft center and that was a nice surprise to come across that. Now two teaspoons of the mincemeat, shovel it down, push hard and then the ice cream that you've already taken out goes back again and back into the freezer again. Now you can see what a nice thing this is to do because you can do it weeks in advance and have it all ready for Christmas Day, ready for the next stage. And Joyce, Jocelyn's got one ready for me, haven't you? Mm -hmm. That's it. All frozen hard again. And the next stage is to get it out of this container and into here, which is a tray full of coconut, which I've toasted under the grill. And you see what lovely color it is. Once I move it about, and all the white coconut comes up from underneath. See all the lovely shades it is. Now I must get the ice cream out of here. And it can be quite tricky getting it out. 
push it down. Come on. There we are. Now what I'm doing now is tossing that. Oh, it's split a wee bit there, but we'll just give it a little helping hand. No, the top's come off, so I'm going to have to scrape it out and cover the top up. I wasn't supposed to do that, but I think we can manage. I'll use my fingers to squeeze that all together and roll it in this coconut. Because it's in the coconut, you can shape it to the shape you want. And we want a nice, neat little tower. And I think Jocelyn's going to bring me the ice plate now. The Leaning Tower of Pisa today, actually. This is really beautiful. One of the most beautiful <laughs> things I've seen. It's it does wonderful. look nice. Very Lovely. simple to do, too. Oh, Just ice oh, in it with flowers frozen. You freeze the water with round the bowl. And then put the flowers on. Yes. And then freeze again. A little bit more like water. Like a layer of jelly. Absolutely. Just the same idea. Yes. yes. Oh, Thank wonderful. You. Very easy really to beautiful. do. beautiful. <laughs> Good. Now, the little bowl should come out quite quickly. Should do. There we are. And we'll set our Leaning Tower of Pisa into it and the topping of course a bit of holly because it's christmas and we've already explained to you how we did that very very simply and serving it i've also got some shortbread biscuits now the shortbread christmas trees are made from my shortbread biscuit recipe which uses the traditional ingredients for scottish shortbread now just have a look over here and i'll show you how i did that all the ingredients for the shortbread were put into a mixing machine so that I ended up with quite a soft, pliable mixture. And the way to get really thin biscuits of shortbread and other biscuit mixtures is to form your, uh, all your ingredients into a big fat sausage like that. And I put that into the fridge to firm up and stiffen so that I can now cut these really finely. And then from that I can cut out the shapes of my little Christmas trees. There we are. Now you can see how really economical you could be with this. If you had a really good eye, you'd get lots and lots and lots of biscuits. And of course, the bits that are left over, all you do is, when they're warm, crump, uh, form them all together again into a little roll, and there you have a shortbread Christmas tree. There you are. And the cooking times for that is a cool oven gas to 300 degrees Fahrenheit, 150 centigrade, for 30 minutes until golden. But take care not to bake them too long. Shortbread does go a little bit bitter when you overcook it. Now, before Jocelyn and I say goodbye, perhaps you'd like the address for the special recipe sheet again. Send a large stamped address envelope self-addressed, of course, to me at Farmhouse Kitchen, Yorkshire Television, Leeds, LS3, 1JS. Get that lovely recipe of yours. I'm sure we're going to have lots and lots of letters, Joss. Well, I hope it's so. such an exciting recipe. Well, I'm quite excited about Christmas, aren't you? It's, no? it's nice. It puts you in the mood. It has it? put me in the mood. <laughs> it's been lovely having you. Most well. interesting to see your very exotic touch to Christmas, which... Uh, in farmhouse kitchen, we perhaps needed that well, little Christmas bit Well, Christmas should be associated with spices, I think. I you think do. It's, yeah, it's a tradition. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm certainly looking forward to trying your recipe over again, over and over again, because I had a little nibble of it earlier on. I certainly You like the fruitiness? Very much. Yes. That stuffing is absolutely aromatic. Well, it's aromatic, and it also has a contrast of textures, I yes, think. Yes, I think important. Yes, it's very important. Yeah. <laughs> well, Goodbye, and I hope you all have a wonderful Christmas. Merry Happy Christmas. Christmas.
farmhouse kitchen books 1, 2 and 3 are still available at £2.55 each, including postage and packing. And our new microwave cookbook is now available, priced £2.95, including postage and packing. All the books are available from bookshops and newsagents, or can be obtained by sending a cheque or postal order to Farmhouse Kitchen, Admail 35, Leeds, LS3, 1XY.